Nick Fitzek. In this video, you're learning how to create a hyperlapse from beginning to end using DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna show you how to shoot it as well because that's an important part, but you can skip ahead using the chapters below to just the post-processing for the incredibly easy and incredibly efficient process in DaVinci Resolve. Let's begin with the shooting process. I've made quite a few tutorials already. There's a playlist up here, but what you need for a hyperlapse is obviously a camera, but you can shoot them on your phone as well. You will also need a subject, an anchor point and a path to follow. The subject here is obviously St. Paul's Cathedral. The anchor point is the little bit that you see on screen right now. And the path that we're gonna follow is this line on the floor here. You can often use tiles on the floor or if you're on a bridge, you can use bits of the railing. Just make sure you're consistent throughout your shot. Now, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your anchor point on your subject will be visible throughout your entire sequence, throughout the path that you will follow. So I highly recommend doing a quick test walk to see if nothing obscures that anchor point. Set your camera to manual mode. Make sure you lock in your exposure setting. Go to the start of your path keep your camera level, and then you can use a focus point in your viewfinder that lines up with your anchor point on your subject. Take a photo, take a step forward, and take another photo. Repeating that process, keeping that anchor point in the exact same spot. The main thing to focus on here is to be consistent in your timing as well as in your step size. These are the two most important bits really. That and keeping your anchor point in the same spot for every photo. Try and shoot at least 100 frames and then once you're done scroll through your photos to have a quick impression of what your shot will look like. Once you're done and happy you're gonna go for a post shoot pint, you're gonna make sure to subscribe to this channel, then you're gonna go home and you're opening up DaVinci Resolve. Drag the folder with the photo sequence into your media library and it will recognize that as an image sequence right click that sequence and create a new timeline enter that timeline select the clip and go to the stabilization panel on the right click analyze and have a look at what the results are like this as you can see is incredibly fast straightforward and if you shot it properly this might be all you need to do but it wouldn't be a Matt Joe's tutorial if we didn't also go into the details. As you can see, there are three methods of stabilization here, and there's a little bit of overlap with the warp stabilizer in After Effects or Premiere Pro, depending on what you use. The first mode is perspective mode, which is most like the warp stabilizer in Adobe software. Then you have similarity, which adjusts your pan, tilt, zoom, and rotation parameters. Thirdly, you have translation, which does pan and tilt changes only. No two hyperlapses are the same, so depending on your shot and how well you shot it or the subject matter even, you're going to want to play around with these three to see what gives you the best result. Now obviously there are more settings you can adjust as well, so let's have a look at these. Camera lock tries to simulate a tripod style shot. This is very useful if you forgot your tripod at home and you're shooting a static time lapse handheld. This will try and lock that off with no motion whatsoever. Zoom tries to get rid of the black bars or black edges induced by the stabilization process. Obviously you're going to zoom into your footage and lose a little bit of resolution here. The cropping ratio decides how much cropping the software is allowed to do on the footage. The smooth slider has an effect on the smoothness of the shot. You can increase or decrease this, play around with it, see what kind of effect it has on your clip. And then the strength slider decreases or increases the overall strength of the stabilization effect. No two hyperlapses are the same, so you might want to try and adjust these parameters and play around with it until you get a result that you're happy with. Now if you're struggling to get to a satisfactory result with that one stabilization Stabilization. Here's a tip, go back to the timeline, right click the clip that you stabilized, create a compound clip from that and then restabilize that clip. This is very similar to the After Effects method that I've taught in many tutorials. This is just the other way to do it in DaVinci Resolve. The more hyperlapses you shoot, obviously, the better you'll become at capturing them and the less work you will have in post-production. Now, I want to point out that the analysis process and generally this whole process is much faster in DaVinci Resolve compared to After Effects. Let's have a look at how they both deal with the analyzation process and also just for fun I've put the two results from a single run of stabilization with standard settings next to each other on screen let me know what you think once you're done with your stabilization you can add speed ramping more color effects motion blur zoom blur whatever you want to do really you can pretty much use this as the start of your edit this is just what I wanted to show you today how to capture and how to process a hyperlapse using DaVinci Resolve what else do you want to learn in this wonderful software this was very much requested so I'm starting to make more and more videos about DaVinci Resolve. I hope you appreciate that. Now, if you struggle with hyperlapse or time-lapse photography, make sure to check out my course. I have a free ebook all about hyperlapse photography and I've got a paid course called the Ultimate Hyperlapse Course. That is a part of the Ultimate Timelapse Course. So depending on what you wanna learn, you can check that out down below this video. I've been doing hyperlapse photography for about a decade now. I've worked with big clients all over the world. So you can trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Now, 
that's pretty much all I've got for you today. You can sign up to become a member of this channel if you appreciate what I'm doing. I appreciate you being here at the end of the video. Let me know what else you want to see down below. And may the clouds forever be in your favor. Bye-bye.